Okay, so hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about using a Sumo generated traffic trace in uh, NS3. Just to recap, in a previous video, I have an example where I showed how we could use uh, the trip, random trip to generate uh, random trips. I just create a simple make file, so make trips to create the random trips using the random trips tool, creates routes, and then make, uh, was it trace? To generate a sumo XML trace, and then convert that trace using trace exporter to an NS2 mobility trace in the TCL language, which is the language that was used for NS2. Okay, so we have that file, and let me show it here in the scratch sumo trace example. Uh, let me just do dash LTH. This is the file right here. So NS2 mobility trace. Okay. If I look at this file, cat. You can see I could ge I generate 307 nodes, so 308 from 0 to 307, and then the simulation timer lasts until 685. So in this example, I'm basically going to create nodes, 308 nodes, and 685. I have to look at the file to determine that, right? And then I create the nodes. And basically I use NS2, this is how it's used. So basically we install, we use the NS2 mobility helper, which is part of the NS3 library, pass it the file name. So the file name is right here. And then I install the mobility in all the nodes. What nodes you say? All the global nodes. So there is a, a node list of all the node created so far in the simulation it will install that mobility to them. If we have, if we don't have enough node nodes in that node container, the global node container, it will only install the mobility in up to those number of nodes. And that's it, basically. And we're done. That's how we use it. So what I'm doing is I'm creating my custom application, if you've seen it in previous video, videos, which periodically broadcast packets every 100 milliseconds. I'm going to set the start time to zero, sim time to simulation time. Now, there is a problem with that. This trace, the NS2 trace, basically, if I, if I go a little bit far back, right? We can see that a node like 215 with ID 215 enters the simulation around time 424, and it wasn't in the simulation before. However, using this standard method with NS, uh, using NS2 trace, actually all the nodes are created at time zero. Let me illustrate that. So uh, how do I run it? I'm going to run it like this with dash dash viz, right? And this is the program. And I'm just going to activate debugging on custom application. application. And so let's run this and see what happened. Now keep in mind that your uh, sumo trace might be, you know, spread out. So you may not see your nodes visible because they're spread out over a large uh, area. Let me increase the size of the nodes just to make them visible. And guess what the node ID here is? 306. It's already there in the simulation. 307, wow. And so I'm starting every single application at time zero and ending it at time, simulation time. So basically all these nodes will be broadcasting packets from time zero. And let me look back again. I have half of the node clustered here and the other half clustered here. And basically only node one will begin to move when the simulation starts but all the nodes will be broadcasting, creating a lot of dropped packets. Let's run this and see. I'm using this tool to just show you the message because I'm tracing the debug, uh, doing a debug trace, which will show 
packet drops. So I'm just gonna click this and then click it back. Okay, as you can see, even not even one second have passed, 285 RX drop. Right? So there's a lot of events going on. So I'm just saying, uh, forget about these messages. All the nodes have started their application and that says they will broadcast. And then as you can see here, node 113 started transmission, node 157 started transmission. And then we get a lot of dropped packets, which is not what we want, right? So what do we do? We need to determine when the and a certain node enters uh, the simulation because as you can see up to 306, they are there in the node, their radios are on, they're trying to send something and you got a lot of dropped packets, which is not what you want, all right? And right, let me go back to my custom application and just remove that, uh, some of the messages I printed because I was having problem with it earlier. Uh, uh, where's my start? And uh, is that custom? Let me just make it. Oh, shoot. I did not want to do that. I don't know how to remove this. So I'll just go. Oh, doing the same thing. So broadcast information. Will. Did I say will? What was the message I got? Anyway, I just don't want to have these printed uh, extra messages being printed. Uh, so yes, yeah, so application at node. So let me just stop. Okay, let me just leave this one here. Application at node has started. And uh, there will be that. I just wanna see if there is any other STD C out. Ah, uh, oh yeah, we'll periodically broadcast. That's what I want to remove. Okay, so what is the solution? Let me stop this, close this. So for that purpose, I actually created this file, NS2 utility, uh, node utility. And what happens here, I just pass it the file name so that I can read it and then apply some regular expression. And what I do there is I try to extract the time node the, and a, uh, every node join the uh, uh, simulation, entered the simulation and the time, the node, basically the last action of the node being the last, uh, basically the last thing that it did within the simulation. And then I could just stop it. Maybe you need to tweak this a little bit but that's my solution for it now. And I basically, I have an, an ST standard pair, uh, not this file, this file, whoop, move it. I have a, a pair of um, node ID, uh, sorry, a map of node ID with a pair of the starting time and end time, I call it node times, okay? And this is basically uh, regular expressions that are used to do that. Let me go back. Uh, also, an added bonus here is I can determine the number of nodes in a simulation. I have I don't have to like look at the file and guess it. And uh, also I can determine the simulation time. So let me uncomment the lines I have commented. So I'm using my NS2 node utility and pass it the file. Instead of hard coding the number of nodes, I'm just gonna do NS2 utility dot get n nodes and uh, also get simulation time, okay? And that basically is ready. I did not create my NS3 nodes yet. I'm just determined the number of nodes from the mobility trace. And then I do what I do regularly. Instead of starting the applications at zero and sim time, I'm gonna stop uh, and stop at sim time. I am gonna use this function I created, get entry time for node I and get exit time for node I. And that's it. Uh, this, these are the two files. So I have to include NS2 node utility, which I'm doing right here. And uh, okay. Let's run this again and see what we get. 
and that it the my utility takes some time reading and doing regular expression. It's a big file. I mean, and the uh, NS2 mobility traces can be large and make sure you have enough memory. How much uh, do I have here? Do I have here? Uh, what is it? Mem info? Cat, was it? Proc, mem info. So on my computer here, I have uh, uh, 64 gigabytes of RAM. Mega, giga. All right. So I have a lot of memory in my computer. I'm not sure if you need a lot of memory for your purpose, for your computer, but uh, for your scenario. So let me just run this. And as you can see, it's very smooth, right? Nodes are transmitting and there are no dropped packets, right? Because node zero is in the simulation, node one transmitting. I don't think the other node is in the range. That's why you're not getting reception yet. But uh, there are some drops. Um, the reason the drop happens here is because this node is so far away here. So the signal is very weak. So it's, it's not picking it up. So it's reported as a drop, but it's not due to collision. Uh, and now we started having reception, right? Node two is transmitting and node three is receiving uh, through the promiscuous trace, it receives this frame and so on. So that is it. That is how we do it. And um, yeah, don't be misled by the dropped packet uh, in the drop trace because it could be due to distance. And since the two nodes are in simulation, I think these are like a kilometer apart or about that. But uh, you know, uh, that's a lot better and a lot more realistic than just doing it straight away. I will share this file in my GitHub so that you could use it uh, for your own uh, projects, right? Uh, if you want to use sumo trace in your uh, simulations. Let me stop this. Yeah, now we have reason three, reason three. You could actually go and look what reason happened in Wi-Fi fee, but some of it is due to like weak signal or, you know, PLCP, physical layer convergence protocol or something like that. Uh, basically, either the signal is low or maybe it's already in TX or already in RX and so on. So this is a more reasonable, plausible scenario that you could use. Let me stop this for NS3 uh, simulation. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you find it useful. If you have any question, email me to my email, uh, aalsuha at clemson.edu. I actually have it on one of my previous video where I said taking a break. I'll probably post it to this one. On my GitHub, I will share the link down in the description below so that you can download it, the code, play with it, and do whatever you want. Thank you very much. Um, please like it, share it, subscribe if you would like. Um, support me, make me feel happy that I'm making a difference in the world. <laughs> and I wish you all the best in your work and uh, have a wonderful day and good luck in your work. Thank you. Bye-bye.